We are back with another episode of Gym Girl Chats. I know everything with the Muscle Series has been a lot of fun and a lot of education, but I would be remiss, amiss, one of those two words, if I wasn't excited to come back to Gym Girl Chats and talk with my friends. And I have someone who has already been on the podcast, but now we are back to just chat, and that is Miss Casey Jo. Welcome back to the podcast and Gym Girl Chats. Yay, I'm excited. Like podcasts like this are so fun. Just like, oh, let's let's hang out and like chat just fun stuff. Not that, you know, everything else we talk about isn't, isn't fun, fun, but <laughs> I'm excited to have just just a gym girl chat. <laughs> yes, me too. Which to start off, I wanted to ask, are you an over the ear headphone wearer or in ear headphone when you're working out? The most important question, kick it off. I am an in ear, not over ear. And the reason being is that I can't stand the sweat that then pulls Mm -hmm. like sort of like on my face. And I just also like, I'm not sure I've even found a pair that I really like. I've tried a couple and they just like don't stay on my head appropriately. Mm -hmm. They kind of like slide off. And then the last thing you want to be thinking about when you're like mid hack squat is are my headphones going to fall off my head, you know? So in ear all the way. <laughs> yeah, I was a over the ear for a little bit of time because I did find that I do have a smaller head. So then when it comes to like hats and headphones and stuff, I do struggle with that. And so I had Bose headphones that I really liked, um, but they would get like that sweat. And still sometimes it would be like you rock your head forward and it starts mm, to come off. That. And I did just get, well, just, it was like a year ago, but it feels like just the Apple over the head over the head, over the ear headphones. And I love the look, but I probably wouldn't work out in them, which is very interesting because when I was thinking about getting them, because my Bose ones I've I've had for like six years, they're like falling apart. Um, I talked to a lot of clients because clients would send their exercise videos and they would be wearing the Apple ones while they were training. And I was like, do you like those for training? And every one of them said yes. And I don't know if it's just my head shape, but like I would likely never train in them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I've tried the Apple ones before too. And that's where I kind of had the issue of them not staying on my head. And I, I'm not sure I, I have a large or small head. I actually don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I assume I have a pretty normal size head, but now I'm like, well, maybe that's okay. the issue. <laughs> yeah. Just, I'm like, should I buy a kid's something like a kid's headphones and see if those fare better for me? <laughs> Am I? What's the other thing about the over the ear headphones is like, I hate when it's like the makeup rubbing off on them. And it's like, that was the other question I had. Do you, are you someone who's like, I go to the gym with makeup on, or are you like, I'm going to go all natural? I usually like, I use like a mineral powder foundation is just sort of like my daily wear. And I, I typically go to the gym, like, like early afternoon, sometimes late morning. So I'm starting my day with like, I'll have some calls. Maybe I'm doing some content, something like that. And I just, I don't care enough to wash my face and yeah. then go to the gym type mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so I try to use more natural makeup, knowing that I am going to sweat in it and that sort of thing. But I I would never be the person to say like, I'm about to go to the gym. Let me go put on a full face of makeup. Mm-hmm. But I also if I had a full face of makeup on, I'm not going to take the time to wash it before I go. Yes. So I'm very similar in that of that. I'm like, I won't take it off because I it's already on. I look good. So why not leave it on? Uh, but I am normally not the person to put it on just to train unless I'm feeling like absolute ass in a day. And I'm like, if I'm about to go stare at myself in the mirror and I feel so bad, then I need to like just put on like a little bit to at least make myself not feel like a zombie. And I will do that. But I will say it is a game changer within training at home because now I don't even remember any of the rules of like training at a gym when it comes to like what clothes to wear. Like a lot of times I'm wearing like pajamas. I do wear still active wear, but I'll wear pajamas or I will have my slippers on or just whatever I have on I'm going out there with. It's funny because I actually like I I live in an apartment complex and we do have like a small gym. So if I ever am doing a session there, which is very rare right now, but I'll do cardio there. Mm -hmm. And there like all rules are off. Like I I might as well be like jumping on a piece of cardio equipment in my bedroom. Like I literally like mismatched whatever. Like sometimes I'll just walk over there without shoes on just (laughs) go in my socks. But I will say too, and this is something that you definitely don't have to think about one, because you're married, two, because you work out at home. But being single, I also am kind of in this like headspace of like, you never know when you're going to meet someone, you know, and I could 
meet future hubby at the gym, you know, and I, I would kick myself if I ran into someone and started having a conversation with like a beautiful man and I looked like a gremlin. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they should, that they should love you no matter how you look, <laughs> but I do get right. it, the but confidence, first impressions, you know, a hundred percent. I, I get that for sure. Um, but I, I love the fact of the thing I love the most about training at home is there were so many times that would stop me of me not feeling good in my body or like what I was wearing when I was at the gym and feel like self-conscious while I was there. And now it's like, I can literally feel awful. And I'm like, no, one's going to see me. So this is wonderful. Yeah. Don't even care. Yeah. A hundred percent. What is your current favorite exercise right now? <sighs> At the gym that I go to here in Austin, we have, it's a piece of equipment from Panada. And I think it's called, I think it's called a squat pro something like that. I actually don't know the exact name of it, but it is like, um, it's not necessarily front loaded, but the the pad comes forward this way and it is a squat movement and it just feels really good. I think my long femurs make squatting just like mm-hmm. freaking annoying. Very so difficult. whatever, however that's set up, the way that I, my movement pattern based on my femurs works with it just feels really smooth and really nice. And I'm also kind of over the barbell squatting at this point. I just like, I don't care enough anymore. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to do it anymore. And this piece of equipment obviously mimics it to enough degree, right? Yes. I'm not having the same amount of like, okay, I have to keep my balance and things like that. And it's, it is still a machine. It's not a free barbell. So it's less systemically taxing. Exactly. Exactly. So that I just, I really like it because one, I, don't enjoy squatting anymore and I'm not forcing myself to do it. And this allows me to still get something out of it. And it just like feels really good for my anatomy. So that one, whatever it's called, something from Panada. Isn't that the best though? When you finally find like what lines up, because I also am a part of the long femur club and barbell back squatting has always felt so difficult to me. And we have a Cybex squat press. So it's a leg press, but it really does mimic it because of the plate rotates as you go down so it's not a fixed plate and I love that squat press so much and the only thing that has gotten me to barbell back squat at all is that prime has they call it the super squat bar but it's a safety bar and I will Uh. say anyone who has long femurs using like a cambered or a safety bar does make it feel a lot more comfortable and like heel wedges but it is just more difficult and that's something where I am also over barbell back squatting and like the setup like I now feel like I'm so lazy with training where I'm just like I don't want to set something up like is there something else like I used to despise hip thrusts just for the setup but now I do them on the smith machine and I'm like it's not that big a deal I'll do it yes yes that's actually what came to mind for my second answer was the hip thrust machine that we have at the gym because yeah dude just setting up barbells I did it for too many years. Yeah. I just don't I'm like, anymore. I put in my time. I'm good. <laughs> I'll use the machine. I don't have to bruise my ego about like using a free weight. Like I'll use the machine. <laughs> no, literally that. And also that Cybex squat press is the Chef's best. Kiss. It is the best. It yeah. is the absolute best. My gym does best. not have one, but anytime I go somewhere that has one, I'm like, well, yes, I'm doing that today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the one thing of like going to different gyms and finding different equipment. I'm like, ooh, I don't have this piece. I want to play with this right mm-hmm. now. What would you say is your favorite activewear brand right at the moment? I have to say Paragon. Not that I have to because I work <laughs> with them, but I literally, it's 99% use code of what I wear. <laughs> yes. I like literally, I mean, it's what I have on right now is Paragon. It is 99% of my closet. And I honestly, like, I think they just keep getting better and better with certain pieces, right? There's always things that I'm like, oh, I don't really love this as much. And that's more so just a personal preference. But over the years, and like, actually, the reason I even got tied into Paragon was because of you. And like, when was that? Like 2018? Yeah. Like forever ago. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I do agree they have gotten better and better. And that's something when I first started working with them, because I was started working with them, they had only had like these tank tops. They weren't even like athletic wear. They were like cotton tank tops. And they had like some t-shirts 
And then they had just come out with the Christina Capron collection. And like I got their first collection that was like actual active wear. And literally since then, like each collection, the quality and the mm -hmm. like attention to detail has improved. And I had talked about that with some people of like talking about different brands. And I'm like, yeah, if you tried Paragon at this time, I can understand why you might have not liked it. But if we look at where the quality has gone to, then I think that you would enjoy it now. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of pieces, especially the Des collection. Like those are still like my most worn pieces. Um, but I am excited for the most recent one. I know the Court collection just recently came out, but the next collection, um, I'm now forgetting the name, but I love that they have the longer inseam for the flare pants. So I'm very jazzed for that. So yes, 30 and they have them in inches. brown. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I know. I was like, please thank the Lord. I'm tired of dealing with it being like a high water. I'm, and I'm not even that tall, but it's like the femurs, it will hit man. a different length. The femurs. the femurs, I know. And then I feel like my pelvic distance, like not my pelvic bone, but like the distance from the front to the back is like longer. I know that sounds so weird, but I really struggled with underwear for a long time because of this, um, that it feels like it's like a longer distance. So then it feels like the pants fit a little bit wonky, but I find that being able to have like the longer inseam really does help me out. So I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm 90%, I'm 5'7", not super tall, but I'm 90% legs, so it, it needs to be a short torso club all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I um, am very awkwardly in the long torso and long femur club, um, so it doesn't quite make sense or add up all of the time, but we're here living and we're experiencing <laughs> the human experience as we go along. But it has helped me over the years to realize that clothes literally aren't meant to fit you. Like you need to find clothes that like you can fit into because I even saw a picture pop up recently of like me back in, I don't know, middle school. And I was just like that outfit was so unflattering on me, but it was what was popular, what was trendy. It's what you could buy in stores. And I was just thinking of like how I would not wear that outfit simply. It had nothing to do with like my weight at that time. Even if I wasn't in the best shape, it was just like those clothes really weren't meant to fit me and my body and what's going to suit me. Uh, so that's been fun trying to figure out like what clothes really work for you. Yeah. Isn't it nice to get to the age where you're just like, oh, I just want to see what this looks like on me, not necessarily whether or not it's like popular, trending, whatever. And you sometimes obviously you can get ideas from what is trending. Like I don't think I would have brought like cargo pants back into mm -hmm. my atmosphere if it wasn't for the fact that they started to get popular again. And I love a good cargo mm -hmm. pant. That said, not all of them actually look that great. So it really <laughs> depends. But yeah. yeah, but I feel like that's where the flare also helps me is it gives that balance to like also my quads and my legs being more muscular. It's like if I go down, I think that's why I don't like wearing leggings because then I feel like it makes me look like I have a peg leg, even though I train calves, I freaking do. But uh, <laughs> the flare, I feel like gives better balance to my body. Just probably my legs I mean, definitely do overpower my calves because I work a lot harder on my my glutes and my quads and my hamstrings than I do my calves. But um, it's there nonetheless. Yeah, I love a flare. I like bring it back. I love it for jeans too. Like that's like a like seventies trend that I'm like, please let's let's do it. Just like not with the low rise stuff though. Any kind of loose fitting clothes or pants, I'm all for. I love when like mm -hmm. baggy baggy clothes coming back. I'm like, I'll take it. And I'm honestly Bring just trying to stock up because I'm like, I know this is going to go out of style. But if I can buy stuff now, because if it's not in style, it is so hard to find. And so I'm like, I will grab the stuff that I need now. Um, but I actually buy a lot of like men's pants and then I'll just get them in like a small so that they're just like young LA. I'll get a lot of like their men's pants in a small and just rock those because I'm like, okay, I can wear these loose fitting pants and they are good. I've actually heard good things about their women's line. And I only recently learned that they had a women's line, but they have like a, they're like cargo jeans. I saw a gal recently wearing them. I was like, oh, where did you get them from? And she's like, oh, it's young LA. I was like, they have women's stuff. 
But yeah, they were actually very cute. Yeah, I have really over the past year, I would say I've gotten into it. I do think I have more men's than women's stuff from them. But I honestly buy a lot of men's clothes in general. And Alex just got to the point where he's okay sharing clothes. He used to be very <laughs> anti sharing clothes. But now he's like, Oh, this large fits you and me. And I'm like, Yes, it does. We should See? share it. Uh, so now I can even expand my wardrobe even further, which is great by me. Um, but they do have good women's stuff. And I have a few things that I've gotten like a lot of compliments on. And I'm like, yeah, they're from Young LA. Um, but yeah, I haven't gotten the cargo jeans yet. But they were when they like launched and everything. I was keeping an eye on it. Um, but I would I would recommend them as a whole as far as like really liking the quality of the stuff overall. Good to know. Good to know. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. You, you should lift heavy. High reps. Carbs low are weight. needed. Keto. Squats are bad for your Squats are great You for should squat astrograph. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. So when you are training, what type of music are you listening to? Uh, mostly dubstep. <laughs> I could have expected that answer. <laughs> yes, I am. Through. I mean, this is me driving in the car if I want to turn on something in the house, like it's mostly heavy bass music. I am mm -hmm. that girl through and through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually brings up great point because I wanted to talk about a recent post you just made talking about your range that you have overall. And that is something that I find that I struggle with is the aspect of wanting to be seen as credible, wanting to be seen as an expert, but then also wanting to still be a person. Because I think that it's kind of like teachers, you know how you want like your teacher to just be a teacher. And then you're like, oh, you have a life outside of being a teacher. That uh -huh. kind of seems weird and you should just be a teacher. Uh, but it, it's something that I struggle with of like, I am a very multifaceted person. I like a lot of things, but then you're also trying to show up as this expert. And it's something that I find of trying to show up as an expert, then people think that they associate you with an expert in everything. And I'm like, but I, I maybe I'm an expert in this thing, but also maybe not. Like I'm an expert in fitness stuff and I'm an expert at this, but that's even, I was talking about skincare the other day and I was like, I want to preface, like, I don't know shit about skincare. Like I've looked into it for my own self, but like, I'm not going to try and act like I know everything and I'm going to tell you what to do. The only thing I will very strictly tell people to do is wear SPF. But outside of that, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what toner you should use. I don't even know what order they go on. And that's honestly why my skincare routine is so simple. Cause I'm like, I can't really mess up the fact of literally just using a cleanser and a moisturizer. So yeah, that's totally fair. And yeah, that's, that's where it does get tough because it, you feel like as soon as you start talking about another topic, that's like, oh, people start asking you questions. And you're like, wait, no, that's not the direction we want to go, you know? Um, and yeah, I, I struggle too, because I feel like I used to share a lot more about like other aspects of my life, like come along for the ride with my day and da da da. And I kind of at some point just got away from that and really just started to like, live my life and then work on Instagram in a way, you know, and really see my Instagram more as business. But then when I do just like one off share something, I'm like, okay, now this just like seems weird. Like we, she went from being like the academic buttoned up, I'm talking about mindset science. And now she's like in a rave outfit. Like what is going on here? So I feel like some form of context is still like required, but maybe it's not. And this is me just like being in my head, you know? And I don't know. And it's not that I battle with like, oh, how much should I be sharing? It's more or less at this point, like, do I actually want to share my life and all of these different aspects of me? Or do I really just want to be Dr. Casey Joe, who talks about mindset science on Instagram. And that's what Instagram is for me, you know? So I, don't, I feel like I am actually in a place right now where I don't really know. Um, I even, I recently bought some granola. <laughs> this is so random. <laughs> bought some granola that I really like. And 
came across it at Whole Foods again today. This is literally on my Instagram story right now. Um, and they had different flavors. I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to get this. And I opened them up in the car as you know, you have to do when you're yeah, driving you home to, to the grocery store. And I was already trying it. I was like, God, this is so good. Like I should probably tell Instagram about it. I was like, I do not remember the last time I got on Instagram. I was like, I found this, this food item that you need to know about. Like I just don't really do that stuff anymore. And I used to do it all of the time. And now it's just kind of becomes this like, should I just randomly pop in with granola recommendations once a quarter? And then the rest of the time I'm talking well, about like, you can at least send them to time. me. I will yeah, take right. all granola recommendations or food <laughs> recommendations. Um, in and general, I, I come back to to is like other people that I follow, no matter where their area of expertise is, if they like pop on their stories, and they're like, I want to tell you about this like random thing. Like I'm intrigued. I still want to hear about it. I still and I'm not thinking like, Obviously, I understand like my granola recommendations aren't taking away from the fact that like I have a PhD in psychology, <laughs> but it does just like feel like more mismatched than maybe it used to in the past. And I actually don't really know why that is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm honestly, I struggle with that because there is so much I want to share and it's kind of like, oh, do I share it on another Instagram? And I tried that for a little bit because like one of my guilty pleasures is like Bachelor, Bachelorette, and I, I, I'm a part of Bachelor Nation. I really just want watch Bachelor, Bachelorette, so I can watch Bachelor in Paradise, because that's where the real fun is. And I, like, sometimes just want to post, like, post about it, but I'm like, this isn't really my gist on here, even though people know that I am a human that has other interests. But I also struggle within the fact of, one, wanting to share enough about the things that I am, like, promoting and talking about and also spending all my time on like I spend a lot of time on work and I want to be able to push the different business stuff forward within work and then I get in my head about okay Instagram tells you you have to wait till your story runs out and you should only post your story all at one time instead of posting throughout the day so then I start to feel held back of like well, I can't share that now because I'm not going to post all my other stuff right now. So I'll just wait till later. Then it ends up I don't even post on my story at all because I was waiting for it to run out. And then it's like three <laughs> days later and I'm like, oh, I need to share this thing about work. But then I also don't want it to all be work. And I'm trying to find like this middle ground because like a year or so ago, I have my separate Instagram that like I literally don't post on at all. So like if people go follow it, you're not going to see anything. Um, but like for a year or so, I posted like just random bachelor updates of like me watching the show and like putting on my story. And that was fun. But then I also like forgot to like go back to that Instagram and do anything like it was just too much. I, I mean, I'm running my dog's Instagram. I'm running. There's a lot going on. And so <laughs> I, I get into this place of like, I want to share because people follow you for being a person. And if you just become a resource, which you can be mm -hmm. a resource and a person, but if you just become a resource, you become a lot more forgettable. And it's also something where it ends up being that, um, like, at least for me as a consumer, is that then I see people's posts, and I'm like, oh, great post, I'll save it, I need to go back to it later. But then I just get bogged down and like, it's so much information that I get overwhelmed to go to that person's page. And so I don't want that to be me for other people feeling like every time I open this, it is great information, and it's educational. But now I feel like it's not even something I want to look at for fun. And so I kind of go between how much do I share, how little do I share, because then you also don't want to share something that then turns someone one away that could be like a potential customer and like just being open on this is like that's how you have to view things as a business owner and it, it's difficult because it's like I want to talk about fantasy football I want to talk about just football in general I want to talk about bachelor I want to talk about comedy I want to talk about these my music but then it's like okay but I need to also talk about these business things and I need to be able to nurture these relationships and so it then just leaves me kind of where I do still share personal stuff or like life stuff, but then I'm also kind of stuck right now, personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really tough. And I think 
also I've been, I've had some experiences too. Most of them have been like on ads. So like that makes sense too, because the people who are seeing ads are the ones who maybe know, know you personally, you know, um, cause they've been following you on Instagram or whatever. And they get a little bit more of like the whole picture. But I think part of it for me too, is like me, like running a certification and trying to say that I'm, I'm here to provide continuing education for other coaches and like this whole thing. And I run into understanding that I'm still like pretty young. And a lot of the people who are coming into like my atmosphere wanting to learn from me are much older than me too. And I've run into this with like ads and stuff and people commenting, Oh, she's so young. Like, what could she know? Or I had, I had an ad that was running once that was at me sitting down and it was the, for the wait list for the certification. And there's like some copy on it. And I had jean shorts on. Apparently the jean shorts just like got people going in not a great I mean, do you even have <laughs> your PhD like, if you wear jean shorts? Literally that. Like <laughs> people are like, oh yeah, because you know anything in your Daisy Dukes. I'm like, they're literally just jean shorts. Like they're not <laughs> anything crazy. Like they're I think there's like a couple like rips in them. Apparently that was what I did I did incorrectly here. But just like multiple people saying stuff like that. And I'm like, to some degree, I'm like, I wish I was just like I could be that older, wiser looking person. So then like when I come back and I'm like, oh, I want to share about the fact that I went to this like rave this weekend or whatever. And it's like, no, that's actually flying in the face of this like professional persona that I'm trying to uphold. But like also, why can't it be both? Like yeah. literally why? But you understand that like these are the just the perspectives of people who are looking in and this is the information that they were given. If they were to sit down and have a conversation with me and like learn more about who I am and like what I stand for and all of these things, it would make more sense to them. It's like, oh, that's really cool that you have this life and you do all of these fun things, but then you can also be this like this teacher, this mentor, this academic. And I don't know, it's just, it's hard for people to see both that both can exist in the same sphere, you know? Oh, 100%. And it's just when you start, whether it's like ads or posts goes off and it starts reaching a demographic that's like not your normal demographic or not the people that follow you, to a certain point, like that's the point is you want it to reach people that are following you and not following you. But I had a post and it was a part of the muscle series and it was clipped. And I was talking about something where we were talking about things that irritated us within the training that we are saying. And I started off and I was like, what irks me the most? And I was talking about a split squat. And then I just got so many people being like, guess everyone thinks that they can be a trainer now. Like this like dumb girl just got her certification during COVID. And I guess she thinks that she knows everything. And then people just tearing apart like what I looked like. People being like, your voice irks me. Like your face irks me. You don't know anything. What, what about your body? And like just tearing it down. And it's hard because because you have to disconnect from the fact of like this person doesn't know what they're talking about and they're just seeing mm -hmm. you and they're drawing their own conclusions. But then it does kind of take a hit at you of like, oh, do people view me that way of like, do they think I don't know what I'm talking about because I look this certain way or because I talked in this certain manner where like even the sweatshirt that I'm wearing now it is from a podcast that I listen to and it is a for all intents and purposes, a dumb podcast. Like they just giggle and it's called Giggly Squad and it's just shits and giggles. <laughs> like you're just laughing. They're talking about dumb stuff and it's funny. And I feel like sometimes when I talk about it, then people are like, oh, well, they're, she's into that or that's her style of comedy. I don't know if I trust her as a coach if she is going to talk about that. And I'm like, okay, I can like something that you don't like and still be intelligent enough as a coach to be able to help you reach your end result. But that's also the aspect of uh, that's something I really do. And I'm sure you do too, as far as how I present within being in the fitness industry is that I do always try to look extremely in shape. Because regardless of the fact of someone can be extremely intelligent and know what they're doing and not have a good physique, I know for a fact that like someone who is not in shape can still be an extremely intelligent person and know what to do within fitness. But I also know the outside perception is that someone does not want someone to train them or to take advice from someone that they don't want to look like or that they don't think looks fit. And so that's something where, of course, I want to look the way that I look like. I'm not saying I'm just doing it for other people, but it is going into it of recognizing, oh, I 
am saying that I'm an expert in this, I need to also look the part. I'm not just saying I am an expert in this, but I also need to look the part because someone that just comes across doesn't know what my intelligence level is. They just can see what I look like. And so that's, you're also balancing all of that as you go through it. Yeah, it is such a weird thing to have to understand that people do make snap judgments. And that's just, it's what humans do. And it's, I mean, no fault to most people, right? They come across your Instagram and they're like, okay, like immediately going, what does she look like? What does she know? Like I'm putting all these pieces together to try to understand if this person is a credible source. Like their brains are just doing that automatically. And we kind of have to just like succumb to the fact that that is what humans do, you know? And that's like kind of like ties everything together that we're talking about. And like I ended up taking that ad down with the jean shorts because I'm like, this is just like, it's not worth it. Yeah. And it's funny because my ads manager was like, but it's getting good engagement. I was like, yeah, but like not, <laughs> not, not good the engagement. engagement I want. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. And it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate that that is what we have to consider. But that's also just kind of how we operate as much as we can sit here and be like, okay, well, let's take in everything about this person first and learn a little bit more before I make a judgment. But nobody's doing that, you know, and it's just the unfortunate reality. I know. But it is like the bridging the gap of like, I feel like an influencer per se can just talk about whatever. And it's just about someone necessarily liking their personality or liking their recommendations. But then when you are either a business owner or an educator or an expert, then you, it feels to a certain degree that you're not entitled to the same ability of opinions because you are supposed to just be this. And so that's where I find, like, I felt very, I related a lot to you talking about like how much range because I do feel like there is like if someone were to meet me after following me on Instagram they would very much so say and I've had people say it of like you are the the same that you are online like your per personality is the way that you talk is like all of that is the same but there would probably also be a ton that they're like I had no idea that you liked these things or you were this into it or this is what things looked like and it's also difficult because people ask of like oh I want to see more days in your life or I want to see more of like what your schedule looks like and I'm like but do you actually mm -hmm. because what if I share something that you end up not liking or you disagreeing with or even like like, again, something as simple as comedy. I share a comedian and you're like, that was a very vulgar joke. And I'm like, it was just a joke. Like, that's the great thing about yeah, comedy. Right. Everything's mm -hmm. a joke. And if you can't take a joke, then maybe don't listen to comedy. But then it's like, right. that was very offensive of you. You always show up as someone who who cares and is, creates space for someone. And I'm like, I do, but I also can take a joke. And that's why I like watching comedy. Totally. Oh, gosh. What do we do about this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If anyone listening has any answers, let us know. We're just talking. <laughs> we don't have the answers to everything. Go listen to our other podcast if you want answers on shit. Yeah, yeah we're just talking. Go over there. Not here. <laughs> yeah. We're just two, two girls figured. We're just, just girls. We're just girls. That's all it is. We're just girls. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program. Because you are awesome and I want you to have this program, I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. But I did, I would did learn something new that you are into um, fairy romance novels. So I'm assuming you've read um, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Yes, that was actually, that was my, my gateway drug. Your gateway? Into, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh, <laughs> into all of that. Yeah, I'm wrapping up now. Is it, I did Crescent City before. Now I'm reading Throne of Glass. Okay. And I'm almost done through that series, which is a freaking beast of a series. <laughs> oh my God. And I actually going into it, because I really liked A Court of Thorn and Roses, 
and Crescent City was decent, but I liked it better. I was a little bit worried. I'm like, I'm going to commit myself to like, I think there's like seven books and most of them are over like 600 pages. Like it's insane. I was very worried about like committing myself to another, like, I also like, I don't, I, I read fast when I'm sitting down and reading, but like, I don't get through a book really fast. Like my, the most reading I do is like on a plane, which I am on frequently, but when I, I'm sometimes just like one chapter at a time, like it takes me a long time to get through it. So anyway, I was a little bit worried that I was going to get into it and just like not love it as much. And now I feel committed. I have to finish it, all this stuff, but I'm understanding now why a lot of people say that they like Throne of Glass more. And I think a lot of it has to do with more just the fact than that a there Court is. of Thorns and Roses or more than Crescent City? Both. Interesting. Shots fired because A Court of Thorns and Roses really set the bar very high for me. And I <laughs> honestly, this is going to be embarrassing. I haven't really read many books since that series. It kind of damaged me. But I also, I will say a little caveat. It's because I have to put myself in book jail or I will literally shirk all of their responsibilities until I finish the book. And that is something I know about myself. It's not, a, it's great in theory as a quality, but when it comes to having responsibilities and having to, you know, run a business, uh, sitting around and reading fairy books all day doesn't really contribute to that. So I have to not let myself read. I read a lot of spreadsheets and I'll read like research, but as far as like enjoyable, like just sit down, read books, then it really is only if I'm like on a plane or on vacation. On vacation, I'll knock out six books on a trip. I'm like, let's go. But other than let's that, go I'm time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it is book time. Let's go. Like I remember yeah, on yeah, our honeymoon. I, like, I don't have that. <laughs> on our honeymoon, I brought like six books and Alex also brought like four to six books. And he he was like, you're not going to read all of those. I was like, literally watch me. And I read through all of them. He maybe read like half of one book. And he was like, why did I take up all this space in my luggage? I was like, I don't know. But I knew very well that I would read this because I literally read on the plane. I read like when he was sitting there like in the sun. I'm like, I don't want to sit in the sun. That's too hot for me. I'll sit in the shade. I'll read my book. I'll be good. Um, so it was, it's always a read, read-a-thon for me when it comes to vacation. Yeah, I definitely, I can get into that mode, but I don't have the issue of like right now the book is sitting on my nightstand and like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a chapter before bed and I'm like, oh my God, it's been six hours. It, it's 2 a.m. I need to go to sleep. Like I don't, I don't get into that. In fact, I kind of wish I did that a little bit more because then it takes me so long to get through the books. Like I'll get in bed at nine, read a chapter or two. I'm like, oh, it's nine thirty. I should probably just call it. You know, <laughs> I don't really like get into it. Even if it's like, I mean, the last, as you know, the last hundred pages of any Sarah J. Moss book is like, oh my God, what mm -hmm. is going on? What is happening? Um, and that's where I'm at with the, I don't even know which one I'm on at this point. Like the <laughs> titles don't even make a difference. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but like one of the that's books. where I'm at with this one. And I think I have two more after this, but I am at that point and I'm like, I'm very excited to finish it. But I also, it's kind of like, not to make just like a sex joke, but it's like edging. Make it. It's like, I know that it is yes. coming, <laughs> coming no, to the end is. and I want to like elongate it. Right. Like mm -hmm. I don't want it. I don't want it to finish. So, um, but yeah, maybe God, that's what I, I was talking with someone else of like, Alex and I will like binge through something and then like not watch the last episode. And part of it is like, I, kind of not burnt myself out, but it's like, oh, I've watched enough and I'm just going to like let that hang. But it's also to a part, I'm like, maybe I just don't want it to finish. So then I'm just leaving the last episode <laughs> to be able to just like chill with the, it. The best bite for last type yeah. of thing, right? <laughs> but it's been like years for some shows where we like, I haven't watched the last episode and we're just like, we'll get to it at one of these points. Like the one that irritates like me. You shows that you haven't watched the finale. <laughs> the Queen's Gambit is one of them where we watch like all five episodes in a row and then the sixth one, we're like, we'll get to it. <laughs> I'm like, why? I don't really know. That was a great show though. That was it a good was. One. It was. And I know you have a, your Spanish lesson here soon, so we will be wrapping up. But I did want to ask about what made you want to start learning Spanish. Yeah. Speaking of range, right. Um, I actually, I took a lot of Spanish in school and I studied abroad in Mexico, lived with a family, did the whole oh, thing. Wow. And I really feel like if I would have kept going, cause I ended up taking like, I think like 
five to six year like classes in Spanish. If I would have just kept up with it, I would be, I would for sure be fluent by now, but that was years ago. And I just started to get really frustrated. Also living in Texas, like there is more oh, opportunities yeah. where there is that Spanish is speakers and just like Spanish in general. And I was getting frustrated because I was like, I know some of this stuff, but I really should know more. And I used to know more. So it's been some like in the last, I've been taking lessons, I think for probably a year at this point, I take one to two times per week, I get on Zoom with Nancy. And so it's all my calendar. It forces me to sit down and do it, which I need. Otherwise, I'm not going to sit on Duolingo and like get myself there. Like I just, I'm not, I'm not good about doing that. So it was more or less just a frustration that I let it go and trying to get it back. And it's been really fun. It's one of those things where like, it feels like I'm using a different part of my brain that I used with, with anything else. And it's, it's really fun for me. I have doing the same thing with piano. Oh, fun. Another thing that I spent so many years taking lessons and then stopped for like a decade. And I used to be able to read music and all this stuff and I can't anymore. And I'm like, that's not okay. These mm-hmm. are things that like skills and like also with Spanish, like that's a really important skill to have that I got so close and then just like let it go. And I don't have kids. I don't have a significant other, you know, I should be able to have hobbies like this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I think that just also shows of like someone who is a high achiever if you're just like, I just want to like learn and dive into these things. And it's like, if I put too much into just work or like too much into fitness, then that's where you burn out. But like having that range uh, allows you to like fit into that because I'm actually learning French right now. I just passed a year on Duolingo. Um, right. They're not a sponsor of this podcast, but if they want to, they can reach out. Um, but I am learning French. Did I say French? Regardless, I'm learning French right now. But actually, Miguel, um, is also learning Spanish right now and he has his Spanish tutor. Um, he used to be fluent and he lost it and he wanted to get it back. So he has his like weekly lessons and sits down. And that's what I'm about to transfer to of like I needed to start with Duolingo to get like the base and to yeah. start to like just get the streak going. I needed the streak. But now I'm like, okay, I'm at this point where I feel like I am not progressing the way I need to because I'm not talking with people and I'm not like pushing myself in that way. I'm just trying to like keep the streak alive. Um, But I'm very glad that I've dedicated the time that I have so far and I have learned for sure. But now it's like, okay, I know I need to be able to progress to that next thing. But yeah, uh, Alex does want to get back into piano because he played for years and years. And what I want to do, piano, I would love to. And I, I also can't read music anymore. And I used to be able to. Um, but I am planning to learn the ukulele. Um, and that's going to be what I do. I know when I, because my hands are too small to do guitar. I found that out. Uh, and I know that I have my nails, but I'm thinking of whenever I have a child, I'll probably have to cut these down or off. And with a ukulele, um, at least for one hand, it needs to be pretty short so you can hit the strings. Um, I can still ah. have them longer, I guess, on one hand to strum. But I'm like, I'll just wait until I have to cut my nails for that. And then that's when I will learn that new new thing. Um, oh my but, God, so yes, I always try trying to be like, what can I learn or what can I do? And I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, I feel like I don't really have hobbies. And they're like, well, you do this, you do this, you do that. I was like, okay, you, you made your point. I, I guess, guess I do have hobbies, yeah. but I just was I mean, looking just at it. It's such a fun like party trick in a way too. You know, you yeah. go somewhere and there's a piano. If I can like sit down and play it again, like that's, it's just so fun to be able to do that. And like, I do travel a decent amount and I'm in Mexico like once a year and to be able to just like actually converse with people. It's yes. just so fun. And also just makes you like not so much just like stupid American that can yeah. only speak one language when <laughs> well, everyone that's... else in the world can speak like four. So that's what started it is that we went to our last year on our anniversary trip in July, we went to St. Bart's and it is a French island and everyone spoke at least two languages, French and English, because they have to cater to us dumb Americans. And mm-hmm. a lot of them spoke more than that. And it was just something so funny if we would walk up and I specifically would say like, hello, because if you try to be like, bonjour, then they start talking to you in French really fast. And so I'd be like, hello, (laughs) dumb American right here. So then they would be like, oh, hello, can I take you to your seat? And then they like talk French to the other person. I'm like, oh, my freaking goodness. Um, But I also was like, I will be back here. And so I need to learn the language so then I can become one of them. Um, And hopefully that will help me because I would also love to go to France actually and eat 
my way through the croissants, go to all the croissant <coughs> places and figure out which ones were the best um, and be able to talk to people about it. And that would be wonderful. So <laughs> that is the dream. Yeah. But uh, I am very glad that we got to chat. Um, and I hope that you have a great Spanish lesson. And if anyone has any answers on how to be an educator <laughs> and an expert, um, but also be a person that does different things, then let us know. We would be interested in your thoughts and great. comments. Feedback welcome. <laughs> yeah. You throw up like a feedback form. <laughs> <laughs> then people are just like, we hate you. Stop talking. And we're like, okay, cool. Sounds so great. <laughs> All right, we're done now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank yeah, you, thank Casey. Thank you so much. This was so fun. <laughs>